Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic, aka Railworks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the EFCB uh, 0880 Malay pack from Machine Rail. Now, kind of like I did, said with the video of um, the Don Pedro 210s that they did. The heck knows how long ago. These are still available on their website, but uh, there's there's a catch, <laughs> as uh, as there always is. But there's a warning that uh, these are outdated and discontinued, so they will not be doing anything else with these. Uh, they are only operable through the editor, so you will have to go into a free roam or create a scenario or whatever you will have to place them into something yourself there are no quick drives they are not quick drive compatible so but they are still available so I can indeed take a peek at them uh, this goes with their Brazilian content and these are awesome these are so stinking cool uh, I really unfortunately don't know the history on these locomotives uh, I just know they're neat they're different all the articulated that we've gotten in game have been well-known stuff that everybody and their mother already knows about so these are just kind of a nice different item to fiddle with uh, but there are three locomotives. They are not dynamically numbered. Each one is detailed for that number. Uh, you also get a string of gondolas, which unfortunately are not dynamically numbered either. Uh, I believe you'll get seven or eight of them individually numbered with and without loads. Uh, Number 70 here is an early variant, I believe one of the kind of as delivered, so it has the link and pin couplers with the buffers on, to, on the front and rear, while the other two variants have knuckle couplers, they're a little more modernized. Uh, these have a really neat steam effect where the steam or the, uh, the exhaust kind of moves around like it's a little windy outside or something, it's kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, I am in a minute, I'm not going to click on any of these just yet because, uh, you know, I've said it before in some of my other videos, uh, I have a very short window of time that I can swap between locomotives before TSE won't let me swap. So once I click on a locomotive, I have to click through and go through each and every one of them relatively quickly uh, so I'm gonna save that for when we go over the whistles the bells the sounds and such uh, so yeah let's uh, let's let's get up close take a peek at them now I did the 0660s a while back and uh, everybody seemed to really like them so I've been meaning to get get around to checking out the 0880s but before the big update I actually could not place all three of these locomotives down. If I placed all three of them down, uh, the second that the third locomotive would finish loading into the game, I'd get an out of memory error. Every single time, no matter what I did, no matter what route it was, it was a dead guarantee. Uh, so I could only ever have a one to two. Two locomotives were still at a pretty high risk of causing an out of memory error, but now, I we seem to be stable. We seem to be not having any weird issues or anything. So, hopefully, it continues. <laughs> so, hopefully, the game is stable enough that we don't get kicked out anymore, and uh, I can actually get a good look at it, all of them together. So. Now, these are, again, not new by any means. These have been around for a little while now. Uh, I've had them for a hot minute, but like I said, you can't 
Where back then you couldn't place all three of them down at once, which so far so good. But uh, so I just I never got around to doing a video of them. I wanted to be able to do a video of all of them at once, and just never got that opportunity. But these are really nicely modeled overall. Uh, as is pretty typical of machine rail. Very, very nice modeling. Coloring is phenomenal. These are built by Alco, American Locomotive Company. The Brooks Works. Now, this is number 70 here, so it's going to be the kind of dated variant. It's got a... Uh, balls. What was I... Ah. It's got the, uh, the Lincoln pin couplers which will go along with all the rolling stock and such that comes with the 210, the 440, uh, the 260, all the other early Brazilian content. Uh, it will go along with all that. So that's the big thing with this one. Uh, the basic build on all three locomotives is identical outside of color changes and some minor details here and there that'll change. The locomotives are, are pretty much identical. So what is kind of entertaining on this one is it looks like it's an old headlamp. It looks like the headlight was an old headlight, but we do very clearly have a generator right here. And it is very clearly tied into the generator, so I'm guessing that this was an old old headlamp that had been converted into electric. So it's kind of interesting, kind of a neat little uh, side note. Uh, but yeah, up close it looks really nice. I don't really know what the stripes are right here. I don't know what they're supposed to convey. They're a bit weird. Uh, get up close here. Look at that. We can still read it. the uh, the brake pumps here, the air pumps. So that's pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, they're not operating. Uh, coloring looks just really, really nice. And overall, really well detailed, as is pretty typical of machine rail. It is kind of interesting, too, that the, uh, the bell is uh, inset got a little uh, groove cut out in the boiler for the bell to sit down in. It's kind of different. Kind of odd. Uh, as is typical with all this stuff, an excellent looking number board. Very well detailed. It's an actual object, not just a 2D texture. So everything looks really, really nice. Really, really nice. Kind of this little water spigot on the side here. It's kind of entertaining. And we hop back here. We got number 78. Now I, you know, I, I, I didn't really notice this until Actually, not too long ago. I don't know if this is supposed to be purple, but the headlight number here is most definitely purple. <laughs> it's definitely noticeable, but it is entertaining. Uh, but this is a later error. As you can see, we have a, a proper electric headlight. It is an actual electric headlight, which... And even the rear headlight on this one does have the... Uh, Let's have the lines go into it like it's electric, so I'm guessing that these are modified, but these are definitely all headlamps originally versus these. These are electric headlights originally. Of course, we got our generator. There's that doohickey on the side here that's different. I think the, uh, I guess the generator in general is different. Pile National 1895. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. 
you can uh, actually read that. Now it is kind of painfully obvious that these are squared off right here. Uh, it's definitely a 2D texture, but at least it's readable, which is really nice. Uh, lettering's a bit blurry. Numbers a little bit blurry on the tender, but uh, anyway, back to our comparison. Headlight's gonna be different. Our generator is a little bit different. Still a uh, pile national, but it's a little bit different error. Um, headlight knuckle couplers. We've had the buffers removed, and it's got a different looking pilot. Yeah, it's a different pilot. Same for the tender. Got our electric headlight. It's even got the wiring going to it, which is pretty cool. Uh, different color scheme. Obviously not uh, not green. It's got kind of this green outline pinstriping going on, which it's a bit blurry. It's not very crispy. Uh, as is typical in their... Uh, Quality attention to detail. Rivets. We got actual rivets. I love it. The black here on the uh, the tender footboard is definitely a little off. The number on the tender is purple as well. And maybe it's supposed to be purple. That's kind of entertaining. It's an odd color to see in trains. I do like the more clean overall look of your drive rods and valve gears over here. It just looks better in my opinion. The, uh, the dirty... I don't know. It just doesn't play as well in Train Simulator. I don't think. This right here doesn't look half bad, but this... I'm not entirely fond of it. That's just personal opinion though. It doesn't float my boat. Uh, same bell. I believe the whistles do change. So we got a shroud right here on this one. This one does have a chimed whistle inside the shroud. There's our uh, safety valves in there. Right? Yeah. We hop back here and it's out in the open. And we have a different whistle model. And we got a third locomotive. This is a dirty, kind of used and abused 73. Uh, 73 is more or less going to be the same as 78 over here, just kind of the used and, used and abused version. So kind of the same color scheme, kind of the same locomotive, just very worn. And the worn, the worn look almost turns out all right. Right here, that's pretty obviously blurred. The lettering ends up really, really blurred. Where the rivets are is really blurred. It just... It doesn't play out as well, I don't think. That's cool. The headlight... There's that GE emblem. It's got a newer GE headlight in there. Or a light bulb. <laughs> You go to the store today and get one of those GE LEDs. It looks almost just like that with the gray by it, with the gray base, and yeah, I'm going off on a tangent. I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the weathering just uh, it doesn't float my boat. But outside of the weathering, this is the same as this. So, anywho, let's jump into it. So here's our first. I adore that whistle. Bell's a little bit quiet. Same bell, different whistle. If you hold the enter button down, it will uh, quill the whistle. This is a really nice feature.
Now, I am going to use this one because I adore the whistle on this locomotive, but I'm going to back up a little bit because holy crap is it loud. Uh, the chuff sounds are the same. The bell sounds are the same. You can just barely hear the bell. The bell is really, really quiet. Uh, the whistle changes from here to here. And then uh, there is one other detail. So our cab. The cab will... For the most part, stay the same, but there are some little uh, kind of odd differences. Yep, see, there it goes. It won't let me change locomotives. Yep. So, unfortunately, you're stuck here, but uh, one of those odd items. Maybe back here. Well, maybe not. Maybe the cab doesn't change. Huh. I lied. Cab doesn't change. Same cab. You can open the cab roof. Open the cab windows. This window. Front door. Front door. Cab texture is alright. Uh, it's a little bit blurry if you zoomed in, but... Otherwise, it's not half bad. It's a wooden cab. Uh, unfortunately, due to some wonkiness with uh, the update, using injectors the hard way is not allowed. So we got to run with the F4 HUD. So sorry, guys, if my frame rate's taken an absolute plummet. Uh, but you can fiddle with a good bit of the cab. Again, these are older. They're not quite up to today's standards. Uh, oh, goodness. So, yeah. Sanders. Whistle. Whistle? Whistle cord. And I do believe the reverse gear does work. Maybe. Ah, uh, maybe not. The J bar does move. Huh. Guess not. Let's see if the brakes release. brakes do not release. Sad times. And they also don't fully release according to the HUD. This should go up to about 90 PSI. Uh, when you jump into these locomotives you will have to immediately start building up a fire because the fire will only be at about 35 to 38 percent. Uh, that will not keep your boiler pressure up for jack squad even alone. <laughs> Headlight. Uh, headlight. Interesting. Headlight on the rear comes on. Headlight on the rear actually looks pretty decent. You know, it's kind of a nice yellow glow. It does kind of shine through the uh, shine through the headlight housing, but I like the color. I like that there's no flare. Uh, maybe the keybinds will work. Let me pull up the keybinds. So the Y key. Yeah, there they go. The Y key will turn on your headlight. Headlight looks really nice. I like the just kind of soft yellow glow. It's not obnoxiously bright. And it's a good color. Uh, but it does bleed through a little bit on either side if you look at it wonky. So like right there it's bleeding through. Which maybe is to kind of give the illusion that it's glowing through the number board, but I don't think it's playing out very well. Right, brakes are released, everything's released. Door switches. Door switches. Uh, 
I guess it doesn't. Oh well. So there's our jet or uh, cylinder exhaust, cylinder cocks. Get a lot of pressure from the uh, from the rear cylinders, not so much from the front though. Another thing, you, these are not fast locomotives by any means. They will top off at like 20, 25 mile an hour. The chuff sounds are okay. Uh, the wide open throttle though, I don't think they're very deep. And they sound very much like, uh, they sound more like a uh, conventional locomotive instead of a Mali. They're not bad chuff sounds, they just sound more conventional. Some nice idle sounds. Uh, these do not have that uh, really simulated uh, steam and physics, steam effects, physics effects, whatever you want to call them. This does not have them, so open the throttle and it's immediate close the throttle it's immediate but it sounds really nice it's definitely one of the simpler locomotives to operate but it sounds pretty nice So, depending on how you blow it, the whistle can give you this weird little, uh, kind of cut off. It just, it shuts off. Like that ending is cut off, there's no kind of drawn out gradual ending. Like that. But it's a really nice sounding whistle. I have no idea why we're having so much trouble building up pressure again. But we are. Might be another one of those quality issues with TS's update. I'm not a fan of that smoke. It looks like a bunch of little cotton balls. So the throttle closed. You are there uh J bar at neutral right now. We're still not building up any pressure, which from a logical standpoint makes no sense. We have a fire, we have water in a boiler. It should most definitely be building up pressure. <laughs> There's just no nowhere for the steam to go right now, but Probably a bug. I never had this issue until actually now. This is the first time I have n ever noticed this problem, so that's unfortunate. You for our cab lights. Cab lights look pretty decent. They don't completely murder my frame rates. Eh, a little bit. Eh, maybe I lied. Maybe they do hurt a little bit. <coughs> Anywho, there's really not much else I can go over. They're not complex to operate. They're pretty simple. Uh, like I said, they're not fast. They typically top off about 20, 25 mile an hour. But uh, now that they've got that bug, though, I 
I don't know if you can just keep running it until it drops down to zero and maybe it resets or something, but yeah. It it does unfortunately not build up boiler pressure anymore, so anyways, any who's. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, once again, a really neat product from Machine Rail. Uh, one of their earlier products. That is still on their website. You can go check it out. Uh, link in the description. If you're a fan of the South American railroading, this is an absolute must-have for your collection. It's a really neat one. Pretty decent looking. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, uh, I will see you next time.